What's up guys, welcome back to part three of common vocabulary mix-ups. I'm not gonna lie, I came up with that idea and I was like, oh, here's a few and let me do part one. And then I was like, wait, there's a few more. Let me do a part two. And then I'm like, people are really enjoying these videos and I figured out a few more that are confusing. Let me do a part three. So who knows how long this series will go on for, but for now we're already on part three and you guys seem to enjoy it. I enjoy making it for you all. It actually gets my brain working more and more because honestly, sometimes it's confusing even for us as native English speakers, because when you hear it in passing, the pronunciation of most of these words are either identical or very similar and then when you're actually reading or writing is when you have to realize which one you're talking about like when you're hearing it you're just like oh you automatically know because you listen to the sentence or whatever but when you're reading it or when you're writing it you're like do I spell it like this is it spelled correctly does it mean this does it mean that so let's go ahead and get into it for today so the first one we're gonna go over the first vocabulary mix-up of today is advice versus advise advice and advise. Advice is a noun that means guidance or recommendations about what someone should do. Advice. If you need advice, you ask someone what you should do. If you're like, hey, I got this really good job opportunity, but it's in Utah and Utah is literally so far away, but I make really good money. So I need advice. What should I do? You're asking someone to help you give you advice on what you should do. Advice. Now then you have advise, and advise is actually a verb that means to give advice or recommend something. That's how they can get confusing. Advice is you actually asking for it and advise is somebody giving it to you. So if you're like, hey, I need advice, it's a noun. I need advice. I need you to tell me what I should do. For me, a lot of times it's advice on, I ask my mom advice on things with my kids or sometimes advice on you know things to do when I'm traveling. I ask my friends like, you know, I'm going out of the country, actually, you're watching this right now, I'm already out of the country. And I had to ask people, my friends from Japan and Vietnam where I'm going, I had to ask them for advice on things to do, even like getting around town, like should I take the bus, should I take the subway, should I take like a taxi? I asked for advice, but then they advised me on what to do. So that's the difference. When you ask for advice, it's a noun, hey, what should I do? Then when somebody gives you the advice that you asked for, they advised you to do something. That's a verb, they're advising you. They are giving you advice. They're telling you what you should do. I know it's confusing. That's why we have this whole series going on right now. It's common mix up, but advice is the noun. With the C, advice is the noun. You are asking someone for advice or you're like, hey, I need advice. Why won't you let me give you some advice? Advise with the S. Yeah, is the act of somebody actually giving you that advice that you asked for. They are advising you. So example for advice is she gave me some valuable advice on how to improve my resume. Advice. And then an example for advise is I would advise you to review your notes before the exam. I would advise you to review your notes before the exam. Advice advice. Same, same, but different. Very similar, but different. The second common mix up is father and further. Now this is not necessarily a common mix up for native English speakers. I know advice and advice. Oh yeah. People get that wrong all the time in like other ones that I, we went over before itch versus scratch, all those ones that we did before native English speakers get those wrong all the time. Father versus further is one that we don't typically struggle with, but a lot of my ESL students do. And it's because the pronunciation, it's not for everybody, depending on what language you come from your native language, you may pronounce this just fine. You may not, but the pronunciation of father and further are very hard, very difficult for most Asian languages. So a lot of times it's easy to get mixed up because of the pronunciation, but father, F-A-T-H-E-R, is someone's dad. You know, your father, a male parent or guardian, your dad, good old dad, father. And further is an adjective or an adverb or a verb, it depends. And it's used to describe something more advanced or at a greater distance or degree. Also, the verb means to advance or promote something. Further and father. 
father again good old dad your daddy father so an example of father is my father taught me how to ride a bike my father f-a-t-h-e-r taught me how to ride a bike then we have further and the adjective i'll give you an example for the adjective form we need to explore this idea further so you need to like you know look into it more and have a greater understanding of this to a greater degree all right further a verb example is she took a course to further her education she wants to go further in life so she took another course to do so to further her education and I can say this is an example off the top of my head I didn't prepare it in my notes but I can say my best friend lives two houses down and her mom lives a little bit further so my best friend lives two houses down two houses down from me and her mom lives a little bit further further again is just used to describe something more advanced or at a greater distance or degree further and father i know for a lot of you guys maybe this one isn't a common mix-up but the pronunciation is similar especially depending on your native language it can be confusing all right so father again good old dad and further is just something that is greater in distance or degree or more advanced further number three the third common mix-up for today is insure insure and usher not usher like yeah yeah, 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 yeah. not usher the singer usher i know right okay so we have insure insure usher and usher the singer English. So first, ensure the verb to make certain that something will happen or be the case. I ensure that if you watch my videos, you will, I don't know, hopefully like them and you will learn, hopefully, if you actually pay attention. I ensure that you will learn if you watch my videos, you will learn English, at least a little bit of it, ensure. So again, ensure just means to make certain that something will happen or to be the case. I am sure you'll love this video. I am sure you'll do great. Ensure. E-N-S-U-R-E. -E, and it is a verb. E-N-S-U-R-E. -E, ensure. Now you have another one that's insure. I-N-S-U-R-E. And it's also a verb. And it means to provide financial protection against loss or damage. So like insurance. You have your insurance for your car. You have your insurance for your health. You have your insurance for your life. You have a bunch of different insurance you are insured. It's financial protection. So if something happens to your car, well, you have car insurance. They can help you pay for it, hopefully, if you get in a wreck or anything. You don't feel good, you go to the hospital, you have health insurance that can help you pay for whatever you might need to feel better. Life insurance insures there you go. That everything is okay when you pass away. That you have, your family has money for your funeral, maybe for like things that you need to have settled in life, whatever. Insure, I-N-S-U-R-E, is just financial protection against loss or damage. So an example is you should insure your car against theft and accidents. You should insure your car against theft and accidents. Insure, E-N-S-U-R-E, is to make certain that something will happen or be the case and insure i-n-s-u-r-e is the financial protection against lost or damage and then we have another one we have usher 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 not the singer, but A-S-S-U-R-E. And it is also a verb and it means to promise or make someone feel confident about something. I assure you, your English is going to be amazing. Assure you, your English is already amazing. I am encouraging you, I'm promising you, I'm making you feel more confident about something. This something being your English. I assure you, you are doing great. I assure, assure, and not usher. If you wanna add it in there, usher, U-S-H-E-R, are. He's a singer and he's from Atlanta. So there you go. But we have insure, E-N-S-U-R-E, insure, I-N-S-U-R-E, and usher, A-S-S-U-R-E. So an example of assure is, I assure you that the project will be completed in time. I assure you that the project will be, will, I assure you that the project will be completed in time. All right, assure. Insure, insure, usher. Now the next one is also another difficult one. This one's a doozy. Number four, common mixed up words, is cite, 
C-I-T-E versus Sight, S-I-T-E versus Sight, S-I-G-H-T. Sight, sight, sight. When you say it, all the same. Pronounced identical. Sight, sight, sight. Spelled different. But different. C-I-T-E, S-I-T-E, S-I-G-H-T. So let's break it down one by one. Sight, C-I-T-E, is a verb, and it's used to refer to or quote as evidence or justification. If you cite something, you're referring to it or you're quoting it. Have you ever had to do like a research paper and you need to use quotes? Like I remember in high school, they're like, hey, you do this research paper, you have to use at least five quotes. I can't just take somebody else's words, right? I have to find these quotes that maybe these people in history have said, have spoken, and I have to put them in my research paper, but then I have to cite them, which means I have to give them credit for those quotes. I have to refer to the quote as evidence or justification. So I need to cite it. So at the end of the paper, you have something called like a bibliography page and you cite everything. So you cite every website that you used, every book, every quote, every whatever, you cite it on your bibliography page just so there's no plagiarism going on. People know, hey, Carly didn't say this. George Washington said this and I cited him. I put it in my, you know, in my paper. Hey, George Washington said this quote, not me. I cited him, C-I-T-E. So an example of this is be sure to cite all your sources in the research paper. Be sure to cite all your sources in the research paper. Cite, C-I-T-E. Then I also said, sorry, my nose is just cite. S-I-T-E. S-I-T-E is a noun and it means a location or place, but it's also a verb meaning to place or set something. But let's look at the noun, a location or place. So first, site, S-I-T-E, that's a location or place. Oh, go to the job site. You know, a lot of construction workers, they go to their job site, but it's different every day. One day they're working on a road, you know, in this area of town. The next day they're working on a building downtown. The next day they're working on a bridge the other side of town. So they go to their job site, their location. Another example, maybe I lost my phone and I have a, an app that finds my phone and it plays like a little tone. I have to go to that site to see where my phone's at. You know, I left it there and I'm like, oh, my, my GPS is trying to locate my phone. And it's like, go to this site, go to this location. Your phone should be here. This is where you left it, this site, S-I-T-E. So an example sentence is the construction site is near the park. The construction site is near the park. All right, and then we have sight, S-I-G-H-T. S-I-G-H-T, and this is just a noun meaning the ability to see or a view. You can say, what a beautiful sight, or what a beautiful view, or my sight isn't so good. My vision, my sight isn't so good. Like you go to the doctor and your doctor you know, tells you to do eye exam because your sight is a little bit different than it was last time. You know, you might be getting a little old, you might need some little glasses. I know I feel you there because I'm the same way. I feel like my sight is not as good as it used to be. Sight, okay. Okay. Or you can say, you know, what a beautiful sight. You know, sunrise on the beach, beautiful sight. So an example sentence is, the Grand Canyon is a breathtaking sight. The Grand Canyon is a breathtaking sight, S-I-G-H-T. All right, so we have C-I-T-E, sight, which means just make sure you give people credit for their quotes or their work. Then you have S-I-T-E, which is a location, like a construction site, a job site, go to that site. And then you have S-I-G-H-T, which just means your vision, what you can see, or it means a view, a view of something. Sight, sight, and sight. I know, bear with me. We only have one more to go over today. And I know this one is exhausting. These ones are always long and exhausting because they're confusing. They're commonly mixed up for a reason. It's because because they're confusing. But the last one for today is not super confusing. It sounds the same, but it's not super confusing. And it's new versus new. New N-E-W versus new K-N-E-W. So new N-E-W is an adjective and it means recently made, discovered, or acquired, not previously used or known. If something is new, you just bought it, or you just made it, or you just discovered it. It's new. It's never ever been bought or worn or discovered or acquired ever before. It's 
new, N-E-W. Maybe you got a new pair of shoes. Maybe you bought a new house. Maybe you bought a new car. And then there's also new to you. Sometimes you buy a new house. It's new to you, right? Maybe somebody lived in there beforehand, but it's new to you. Sometimes you buy a new car. Maybe it's used. Maybe somebody had it before you, but it's new to you. Sometimes new can mean brand new. Like you go to the store, you buy it. It's yours. You're the first person to ever own it. It's new. And then it can also mean new to you, like bigger, more expensive purchases like a house or a boat or a motorcycle or a car, you're like, hmm, I can save myself a couple bucks if I buy a used one. So yeah, it's used, but it's new to you. It's my new car, my new car, because new to me, new. So an example of this is I just bought a new phone. I know Apple usually comes out with their new phones this time of year, so pretty soon we'll be seeing everybody having new iPhones. I just bought a new phone. Then we have new K-N-E-W, and this just is the past tense of no. So if you know something, right, the past tense is, oh, I knew blah, blah, blah. So this just means to be aware of or have knowledge of something in the past. So I knew someone named Stephanie when I was in high school. She was really cool. Knew. It was in the past. Like I knew her. I don't really know her today. I don't know where she is in the world. I don't know what's going on in her life, but I knew of her. Or if you're trying to remember something like, man, I knew there used to be a coffee shop down the road in my hometown, but I don't know. I don't remember if it's still there. New, past tense, K-N-E-W. You had knowledge of something, but in the past. So an example is, I knew her from middle school. I knew her from middle school. Like I said, Stephanie, girl, I don't know where you at, but I used to know you. I knew you back in high school, back in middle school. New. All right, so you have new something, N-E-W, something that is never been owned before, it is recently made, discovered, or acquired, or bought, it's new. And then you have new, the past tense of know, which means to be aware of or have knowledge of something in the past. New and new. Let's go over one final recap. I know this is a longer video. We have advice versus advise, father and further, insure, insure, usher, usher. And then we have sight, sight, and sight, and then new and new. And I know my husband, who is also my editor, is like, all these sound the same. What's going on? I'm going to have to let him take a peek at my notes. <laughs> but I hope you guys did enjoy this video. And I hope you learned a little bit more about these common mix up, these common mistaken words. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Oh, 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 oh